that's so <laughs> man that's you're just so dope it's just like y'all and and, and, that, and that's what makes doing this um doing this this series and these interviews so easy because I literally pick people that I genuinely am a fan of like I genuinely love and you know um I I, I you know I, I have to give credit where credit is due because I was actually inspired by um um Amanda Seals her podcast she has a segment on her podcast called people I like and oh. that's like that's like the girth of the podcast she has a guest someone that she likes and they just talk like they just have okay. a they just have a uh, they just have a key and I'm just like that's dope like I would <laughs> love to just talk to an interview real life people that I know and just get into some things because you know I feel like you don't need a million followers and you don't need to be, um, you don't have to be validated by a blue check next to your name on Instagram to be somebody who is of substance and has love and light to share with the world. And you know what I'm saying? So, so, okay. So let's talk about, um, we're going back to the, the college days. Okay. Because you were ever because because I, I have to once again also giving credit where credit is due. The Phoenix was honestly such a it was revolutionary, honestly. Oh, yes. Like oh. it was it was creative, it was innovative, it was <laughs> I mean, just the level of collaboration, you know, it really became like a, a, a whole thing. Wow. Seeing people literally seeing all those students gather. To, to all the Phoenix events and to see you guys on stage doing, doing just like just being yourselves. <laughs> but it was such a beautiful organized production, like every single time. And so it evolved to something great. And you were a part of that. Yes. You yes. were a part of that. <laughs> and you were, and you were the, you were the loved and the admired. Yeah, yeah. President. That's so crazy. So, uh, how, so how did that come to be? Like, where did this like, well, I mean, of course you, you just, you're just a natural born leader, but like what, what, what drew you to <laughs> wanting to take on the leadership of something so huge like that? You know what? That is so crazy because I just had, I don't know if you know Dave Iron Reader. Uh, I just had him over and we were talking about it. He was president at one time and Kahari was just here a couple of days ago and he was talking about how we were really like the meat um, but mm -hmm. how did it come to be? So Daryl Shaheed, aka John the Don, my homie for life, literally, uh, he had to beg, not beg me, but he like hounded. He was not letting up. Um, so he was initially friends with my friend group. And a while ago, we had a house and we used to have parties all the time. And before Phoenix was what it was, it was called FTA. And it was just this mess of an org we were getting stuff done and I wasn't a part of it at the time. I was just kind of a friend of a friend. So they was getting stuff done, but it was just really kind of like unorganized. It looked raunchy. There was like strippers involved. Like it was a really deep little organization before I got involved. Um, <laughs> and so Daryl at the time was just kind of like, I want to, I want to change it. Like I really want to bring it to, cause at first it wasn't, it was on campus, but not really they really only threw parties. He's like, I really want to bring it to campus. And at first I was like, I really don't want to be associated <laughs> with that, right? Like, but my friends were already the core group of what Phoenix was getting ready to become. Um, uh, so I was just like, ah, okay, you know, I'll, I'll join in. So at first I was just a regular org member, right? That didn't last long at all. I'll say, about two, three months in, I started having to come to more of the executive board meetings. And I'm like, this is weird. He's like, it's just for you to learn the ropes, right? Uh, two weeks later, he's just like, I'm grooming you to become president. I want you to know at some point, you're going to be president of this organization and you're going to take us where we need to be. And I was like, ha, whatever. <laughs> so when they brought me on, they brought me on for a position that was very brand new. And I bring, I brought Devon Reader up because in the beginning, my position was literally everything he was doing as vice president. And he wasn't happy with that. So we kind of butted heads quite a bit. Um, he was like, why, why do we need her? Like, that's everything that I'm supposed to do. 
Um, and so we had some other stuff happen in the org, like, you, you know, some of our people went Greek. So things like that happened and other people had to step up and take charge. Um, so when that happened, yes, Devon and Daryl kind of like really did their things, but we had a summer session. Mm-hmm. In these summer meetings, my goodness, we would be in these rooms in the student center for six eight hours long, just like really trying to revamp and and think about what can we do different that all these other orgs are already doing, but we could do it better. What what can we change? I'm telling you every summer session was a headache. Okay. But it is the reason why Phoenix is what it is today. I give Daryl all his credit. Um, He learned so much. Like I, well, one thing I say is there was a mover and a shaker. Like I, he made so many things just happen. When we sat down there and had the a session, mm-hmm. woo, like it was, all best was off. It was like, we either doing this or we not. And we took off and it was so scary. Like I was in this, this event planning position and I'm just like, I've never event planned in my life, but this man sees something. So I'm going, I, I'm going I'm I'm to rock with him for a little bit. And then when our, our members who be a go Greek came back and we were uh, kind of just like getting in a mix of really being prominent on campus. Our first Grammys was, it was all right, a little raunchy. Uh, it was all right. We had a couple other events where I had to just like kind of like step in and just be like, no, we're not doing this. No, uh-uh, this is ghetto. This is, no, this is a lot. Like I can't take it. Uh, mm-hmm. It took a lot of that. A lot of arguing behind the scenes. I would not change it. I really feel like had we not had that summer session, Phoenix wouldn't be what it was today. Everything that Phoenix did, we did it for the student body. Like it wasn't for us. It was like, we think they would like that. So when we, we would even like plan events and like make flyers and the event be coming up and we'd be like, ah, we, we seen how people talking about it we gonna trash it. We're not gonna do it. Like that's how dedicated we were mm-hmm. to becoming who we are today, who, who they are today. I'll, I'll say who they are today. I'm not in it no more. You but, are part of the legacy. You know, you're part of the legacy. Always a part of the legacy. Oh. You're correct. Yes, you're right. But so in terms of me becoming president, I rejected it twice. I was in, I was nominated two times for two different elections. And both times I was like, no. I don't want to be in the spotlight. I love behind the scenes. I loved when everybody was like, okay, we got to go talk to Vicky first. We got to go talk to Vicky first. When you're president, they go talk to the event planner, the vice president first. That's how we worked it. That's how we ran our thing. President was literally just the face. I did not want to be the face. I wanted to be the work behind the scenes. And mm-hmm. I rejected it twice. And then one year I was just like, okay, I- I'm going to do it. And mm-hmm. I jumped into that role and it it felt like I was supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it really, it was so, it, everything came so natural. Like I loved talking to other orgs and making those connections so that we could do stuff um, together on campus. Like I, I loved international students. Like I, I, I went everywhere to make connections and it was probably the so the bulk of my college career was event planning and I, I haven't done anything with it yet but I'm pretty sure if I wanted to I totally could but I, I literally got to give all the praise to to Daryl uh Daryl Shaheed Donovan Smith Davon Reader like they were that core group including myself who really in those summer sessions revamped Phoenix and was like okay something's got to change and, and, and we made that change and Phoenix was literally my whole life like when I was there I I wouldn't do anything different. Maybe I would have took the president position a little bit earlier because it was a sweet position. Like people loved me off the strength of that. Um, Not that I didn't do anything, but I had proved myself so much as an event planner. It was like just being the face as the president. You know, there was a few things that I had to jump in and do, but Daryl trusted me to just be like, he's like, just go. You got it. You (laughs) You are. (laughs) <laughs> you are a president. You are a president to me. And, and and it's so crazy how like, you know, people don't give us young folk the credit that we deserve because even with us being college aged kids, you know, like for for Daryl to have that eye and to, and to feel that in his heart that, that you mm-hmm. were supposed to be in that position and mm-hmm. for him to be so right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. Like, I told but him when we, I start my know, practice. We know a little something. Like everybody, like people who were who are supposed to be leaders, people can feel that. Like oh, 
it's almost like I don't even I don't, like I don't even know what's gonna come out of this, but I just know that I need you to be involved. Uh. And 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 that never reminds me, that is how we that is how I finally got to meet you because I like I said, I saw you everywhere, but mm-hmm. I didn't know, but like, we didn't know each other, and you knew a lot of the people that I knew. And so when yep. we finally had, I was like, I was like, wow, this woman is just so she's just so wow, like, like. <laughs> Like, wow, she's so cool like, okay cool and 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 you inspired me to want to get involved and shout out to ricky yes shout out to ricky oh my gosh like wow talk like her and daryl showed me because of because of that position i have been the social media i was the social media manager for one point for um plato's closet Wow. I'm the social media manager now for my dad's church. But a lot of the stuff that I do now, I learn from Daryl and Ricky challenging me. Like, be yeah. more consistent in post. This is what you have to do. Like, because I am kind of more of an introvert. Like, and I'm the same way. I become more of an extrovert now. Like, my Twitter is my, was like my evil alter ego now. But, <laughs> but my in my evil introverted uh, uh, alter ego but um but it's just so crazy how like I, I it it showed me social media from the audience eyes yes 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 like like, like 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 they taught me that like okay you put it out there once you know it's out there but the audience the but the people who are on the other side of their phones who are scrolling they constantly have to be reminded that yep. this event is coming up. It's not enough to just put it out there. No, you have to, you have, because people's attention spans are not like that. Like I didn't get it then, but I was slowly but surely getting it. Like, oh, like you really have to like keep, it's like it's a consistent thing. And that's how people really get intrigued. Cause they're like, what is this? What is this thing that keeps popping up on my timeline? What's happening here? Yeah. Who's involved? And I so, wonder why we had all those little meetings. That's why. That's why we had all them team meetings because it was t- it was time to teach. You know, so it's it's one thing for us to come together and be like, okay, we all in the same org and we all wear the same T-shirt. But now what? Like, what are we learning from this? Everybody had to learn something. And, I was oh, grateful man. for that learning experience. Ooh. I was grateful that it was. If I was grateful that I was given the space to learn because I feel like when you have such an established organization already, easily egos can get in the way. Mm-hmm. But I never, I never felt that, at least from the people from which it mattered. I never felt that. Yeah. And, and that honestly is, it is just what, what makes that, that memory just so, so beautiful to me. Like, just, just like, so, so much personal stuff, I would say was ugly for me in my college, in my college years. But you know, that's just growing pains. You know, yeah. nobody, nobody can go through that for you. Right. But I will say that like the the relationships that I can say I still have with people and that connection I still have with the people that I brought with me, like, you know, nothing brings you together like college, man. Like I'm really realizing that's that like, is a special kind of like just it's a special kind of like wine nights. <laughs> oh man, and we can say all day that we be I'm so tired. <laughs> we love eastern and everything about it okay yes we talk, no, we talk so much Ooh. we would talk so much ish about eastern we really and do would. and do like but, but i would never I change it. my experience that's why I call black eastern uh uh the the, the honorary hbcu because literally every hbcu if you go to they be like the, the the financial aid is is ratchet mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. uh you call it the room and board is ratchet but we <laughs> had a good time <laughs> yep well, yeah, but you had a good time you got stories to tell I have stories for days like days so I college was definitely it for me I'm so glad I went like whew. so my okay I want to find a good closing question for you so give me a moment while I yeah take your time (laughs) give me a moment while I figure out what how how I want to close this with you okay (laughs) let's see I guess you know I can't I'm gonna ask this only because I don't think I've ever asked anyone this one question before and because I know the type and, and because I know the people that will most likely see this specific interview I'm going to ask this for them. Okay. 
what is something that the average person would not know about you? Ha! Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> it's so many. You know what? They now now they would probably know because I use it as an icebreaker quite a bit. Um, but when I was I, I had to be five or six, I was snuck into Canada. People don't know that. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. So um, at my age, I just went into the foster care system. I was with my first foster, well, not my first foster family, but I was with a family that was a little more permanent than the, the 10 or 12 before uh, this one. So I'm with this family. We're getting ready to go. I don't know if you know about it, but we're getting ready to go to Wheels Inn in Canada. The funnest place on earth, right? Like it was, we were so excited. We all like had to, so I was, I was one of the youngest in that foster family. So we all like, everybody had to like do certain things to be able to go on the trip, but I didn't have to do anything because I was a baby, um, except be the one who hides under all the stuff. And I never thought anything about that until I got a little older and asked my mom, like, why was I doing that? But um, she's like, yeah, we, we didn't have your papers. I was like, huh. you cannot take a foster youth out of the state without paperwork. Talk less of out of the country. So I'm leaving the country with no paperwork, me and my sister. Um, and the way we got in is they hit us and we were in a 16 passenger van. There's about eight family members sitting in the seats, but come the border, we're under like microwaves that we were taking with us and covers and blankets and towels and we went there that way and came back that way and it's by far the funniest thing that's ever happened because people are like you you can't get smuggled into camp if you're a foster youth with no paperwork yes you can <laughs> there are ways there are, there ways. are ways <laughs> wow what a life what a life you lived Ms. I have Lord. another one if you have time go for it go for it Okay, so this other one, just because it was Black History Month, I'll tell this one. I never tell this story because I'm so embarrassed by it, but I was actually at Rosa Parks' uh, burial after her funeral, so I'm with a different foster family at this time. Um, my last name is still Victoria Caffey at the time, so the family had like a little bit of an issue with me not using her last name, so she never showed me the interview, but I remember it to the T, to this day because it was so embarrassing. Um, so I'm like seven or eight. The lady's like, you know, tell us about Miss Rosa Parks. Like, what, what do you know? And, and I about, and, and like, I, I'm sure that's what came out of my mouth. But at the end of it, I was like, I'm really happy to be here. It's a historical moment. She was a wonderful woman. Blah, blah. But that was like five minutes of just like rambling before I got to that part. So then I saw the camera light go off. And the lady goes, well, we're so happy to have this moment with such a special, special girl. And I was like, I, at, that, at that age, you know she's calling you like special ed maybe, but like, <laughs> I was just standing there like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was so traumatized. And to this day, I think about it like, did she mean special or does she mean like special? I stuttered for literally like, I was just like, Oh, well, and then I, and I, and even the foster parent behind me is just like, spit it out. Like, what are you trying to say? Like, and so to this day, I've never seen the interview. I've, I, I just remember that moment. Like, whew, we're glad we got through with this special kid. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. She's a special needs kid. That's what got me. Special needs kid. Special, special needs kid. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Glad I'll never see this again. Like, and it's been so hard to find the video, but you'd never know that about me because I was totally well, I looked the same, but I was so like it was so bad. It was so bad of an interview. They called me all guard out of nowhere. We just got there, we was chasing the cars the whole time. Like it was a lot. Oh my god. You never know I was there and did that interview and got called a special needs child because I have like stage fright. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just glad that you are not an internet sensation for that video. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yes. it's going to be real shady to find that video and, could, and, and they could have had you on seven different remixes. You, you, know how they, you know how they do you. You, you know, know how, how 
our mumble rap is successful these days. <laughs> they would have got me. You know how they do you. Once you become an internet sensation, for better or for worse, them remixes. Okay. So I'm just glad that you're not somewhere auto-tuned. And, and that video is somewhere safely tucked somewhere. <laughs> and and hopefully we... <laughs> so hopefully if, if it is found you find it and then you right. can have the control <laughs> fingers crossed like i hope i never find it but also i hope i am the one that finds it. i don't even know what news outlet it was on it i do know it came on super early in the morning like mm-hmm. six something so it had to be one of those weird morning news stations so i don't know if i'll ever find it but it, i'd love to i would really love to just to see like you was down bad shorty like you <laughs> you was really down bad <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well victoria lewis i'm gonna go ahead and close out this interview but 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 stick around because afterwards we gonna really have a key because oh, i miss you and, miss and we, you. we gotta catch up oh. thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule out of your day to engage with me to have this interview with me and to and to be so gracious enough to do this on my platform um like I said I could I could sing I could sing your praises literally day and night like I love you so much you're you like so like much. like one of the coolest women to just ever be and um I just I, I honestly I love you for you I love you so much and <laughs> she said she loved me she said she loved me y'all thank you so much for allowing me to be on your platform like I said I'm such a fan of this this whole series that you've been doing your channel as a whole first of all Uh, I just like hearing you talk for some reason but also (laughs) I loved this series like you have such a pleasant voice um I I just loved watching that you you've put so many people in the spotlight and you just don't know how much that means to them because you, you never know what people are going through in this pandemic having to be alone by themselves and they need somebody to talk to you know what I'm saying so bless your heart this has been amazing thank you so much for having me thank you well you guys thank you so so much for tuning into this episode thank you for getting into this conversation that I had with Victoria um you know I mean there's not there's not really much to say like 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 you've seen it all you've heard it all and um please stay tuned for the next episode because there will be more and comment below and let us know how you felt about this episode and with that said bye Bye.